Uh, before I start off, how many of you have been on an app track before? Wow, that's pretty awesome. That's how you know you're in Chicago. So my, na my name is Ismael Cuevas, Government Affairs for Amtrak. Uh, I've been working there for a little bit over a year now. Um, and I've had the, I have the entire Midwest region for Amtrak. So there's also states that normally as Chicagoans, we wouldn't consider Midwest, but it's the, re the, re the region that was assigned to me. So I go as far south as Arkansas, as far east as West Virginia, and as far west as the Dakotas, um, and obviously every state around the Great Lakes region. Um, and so when I asked that question, the farther I leave from Chicago, the less hands there are. So that's how I wanted to see what that looked like. Um, but I'm gonna, I have only 15, less than 15 minutes, minutes to talk to you all, but I wanted to talk about some really cool projects that are happening at uh, Chicago Union Station. Uh, there's a lot of growth that's happening specifically after the bipartisan infrastructure law that was passed uh, by Congress uh, in 2021. And there's a lot of funds that are coming to Amtrak uh, via different mechanisms, and we're trying to uh, utilize those in Chicago because, as you all know, and you've probably t we've talked about that all day, is the tr as a transportation hub, right? We also know that passenger rail is important uh, to, to the city and the, the state and the, at, at large in the Midwest. So if I start speaking a little bit too fast, someone go like this, because I have to try to squeeze in a lot. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna talk about, uh, I'm not gonna talk about all the eight projects I have here, but let's just go over. So this is a map of Chicago. I'm gonna talk about the Chicago Union Station itself, the St. Charles Airline. Um, I'm gonna talk about the actual improvements inside the station. Uh, new platforms at Jolit Station, uh, south of the lake, what's happening uh, near Indiana, and then what's happening in Michigan uh, in terms of uh, double tracking and increasing our speed. Uh, so I'll touch on some of those, and if I don't, you, know, you can just uh, you know find me after and we can talk about it. So the most exciting part for me is Chicago Union Station components. So. Uh, why is that? Well, when I, when I, one of you all been to the Great Hall, it's a beautiful Great Hall, right? But then you go underneath to the mezzanine, it kind of starts getting a little bit dark. I'm a tall person, so the ceilings are, you know, I look at the ceilings, it's, it's kind of, kind of gloomy down there. But that's one of the biggest projects that there that's going to be uh, work, getting worked on with if funding comes through. The, um, so the Chicago Union Station project. So there will be upgrades to stations that would improve safety, increase capacity. Uh, enhance customer experience uh, and adding new passenger platforms and upgrading the ventilation system of the train sheds. Um, so I have some, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm gonna go through the, the uh, platform reactivation first. So platform reactivation, why is this important? Before I talked about platform reactivation. So currently Amtrak has a program called the, uh, Am, or it has a vision called Amtrak Connects Us. And so what it looks, what, what this vision is, is to expand passenger rails to cities that don't have passenger rail or to increase frequency on current routes. So for example, Madison, Wisconsin does not have passenger rail. We're trying to expand there. Columbus, Ohio doesn't have passenger rail. We're trying to expand it. Green Bay, Duluth, Minnesota, right? These cities that, no, that did not have population, uh, a significant population back when Amtrak was created in 1971 have now exploded in population size, right? And so, you know, the more and more we talk to to mayors and uh, senators and state reps and Congress people, we know that traffic congestion is blowing up uh, across the country. So we know that passenger rail can alleviate that. Um, and so, if we're going to increase, if we're going to increase different routes, add new routes, increase frequency, for example, add, you know, m many more round trips to Milwaukee or St. Louis or Detroit. We need to increase capacity at the station. So um, have any of you been to the beautiful old post office building? How many of you all, how many of you all knew that there was uh, train tracks underneath? So a couple of you knew that. So underneath there's train, sta uh, there's train tracks and that was specifically used for the, for the movement of, uh, of, of mail. Uh, and so all those, uh, they're currently not being utilized. They're just sitting there. Uh, those old platforms are just sitting there and they're actually uh, to put it in simple terms, I have my notes here and they're all like in engineering terms and not an engineer, so I'm not going to read those to you. But essentially, the old platforms are on a, at a much higher height than passenger rail, so the, the configuration of the train itself wouldn't fit. And that basically requires w way new platforms. So with the imp uh, increasing platform also means lighting, also making, making them ADA accessible, right? Uh, and that's one of the most important things for Amtrak is ADA accessibility, not just on our platforms, but also on our trains and our stations and, and, and all of our assets that are customer facing. Uh, how do we uh, increase ADA accessibility? 
Um, this also means that there is uh, operational flexibility and accessibility. Why do I say that? As you all know, at Chicago Union Station, we also uh, there's also metro down there, right? So as air, uh, you know, and as, as there's projected growth in the future, you know, hopefully after we all get through this COVID bump that we're uh, post COVID bump that we're going through, uh, we also know that they, they will need to increase capacity. So we need to. Uh, that's one of the biggest projects that's happening at at this at, with this proposed chip project. Um, the next slide is uh, the concourse and mezzanine improvements. And that's the one that I was talking about in terms of, you know, you go in the great hall, but then you go downstairs and it gets a little bit dark. It's way different, right? Um, so that, uh, the, that concourse and mezzanine, mezzanine were redesigned, I think, in early 91. And I always joke with my boss that I was only two years old, but it's okay. Um, it, it, it's definitely age and we have to improve that. So one of the biggest things there is improving sight lines. So currently when you get off a of Metro or an Amtrak and you're looking across, it's pretty much blocked off. There's waiting rooms. Uh, there is old walls that are that used to have ticket counters. It's, we don't have ticket counters anymore uh, the way that we used to have. So all that has to be basically get reconfigured to make it a much more open station, right? Uh, looking at what's happening in Moynihan in New York, looking at uh, train stations in Japan and Europe. So we're trying to look at different stations across the world to ensure that we have a world-class station uh, uh, here in Chicago. Um, and of course, uh, maximizing space in the food court, uh, maximizing ceilings, that's one of the biggest things that I keep talk, talk, telling engineers, I'm like, hey, we have to maximize the, how tall they are. Um, because some parts, you know, you go there, it gets a little bit low. So uh, that's really important. Obviously, these projects are, are, are very expensive. This one has approximately a cost of $350 million. And so I'm not going to talk too much about uh, the cost of these projects, but the reason why I bring that up now is because as part of the application program, we have to work with multiple agencies uh, throughout the city and multiple uh, MPOs and things like that to advocate for Chicago. And not just when I'm going out to different uh, parts of, of the Midwest, you know, I, of course, we talk to Chicago and Chicagoland elected officials, but in, in, in general, in Michigan, uh, Indiana, Wisconsin, they also need to, we also ask them for letters of support or support in the media to say, hey, you know, this train from Milwaukee to Chicago, you know, it's gonna be much, it's gonna shave off five, 10, 15 minutes if we have increased capacity at Chicago Union Station, right? So we're looking collaboratively and, and holistically at the region as to how they can help out our application. Um, let's see. Com the Chicago access components, these are components that are that are outside of the station, um, but are also important for this expansion that we see this growth. So um, if anyone's ever been uh, on 18th Street Bridge, uh, basically by Chinatown, uh, you're gonna, if you look south, there's a Union Pacific yard there, uh, and you can see it on the right side of the image. So currently uh, Amtrak is trying to figure out if we can uh, acquire that. So we started uh, meeting with Union Pacific to acquire that, that particular lot. Essentially, if we're gonna, uh, you know, for maintenance, for storage purposes, uh, we need to acquire a space to park their trains essentially overnight. Uh, and this is a good yard that is nearby the station uh, and that has direct access to the Union Station on an increasing capacity. The second part, going back to that reference that I gave you earlier, if you're on the 18th Street Bridge, uh, looking northbound uh, between Canal and I think that's Clark. Uh, you all, have you all seen that bridge that's like just standing up and it doesn't ever move? So that's that's the Ch St. Charles St. Charles Airline Bridge. And fun fact, it's called an airline because before airlines, the the plane, you know, is an elevated line that went up top. So that's what they call it an airline, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but this uh, this bridge has been uh, is stayed up. Uh, essentially, what we're trying to do. Let me see if I can point here. Uh, here we go. So the bridge is here. Currently, um, it's not. It's not. Uh, essentially, when trains come in, let's say they're coming in here, they have to do this weird reverse. Oh, so it's not connected right now. They have to do this weird reverse maneuver and then an up maneuver. Essentially, it just takes a long time for current trains to do these maneuvers to get into the station. And so uh, putting the, the bridge back into function and then having increased connections going east and south is gonna reduce the time that the train takes 
when you're leaving or arriving to Union Station, which is going to increase, you know, obviously uh, on-time performance for our trains. And I think I just, oh, here we go. So this is a, a, another important project that's happening in, at, at Union Station. Um, the timeline for these is, I gave you the, the, the ones that are, we are, we're working on and for the next two or three years. The reason why I didn't go all the other ones because we're, we're still waiting on, on, you know, even funding for those. Um, but yeah, that's, that's some of the, the major projects that are coming to Chicago Union Station. And I just wanted to open up for questions uh, since I just have uh, four minutes left. Why is that bridge up? That bridge is up because when there was construction work being done, I don't know when, uh, there, someone accidentally cut a wire on that bridge. And so that bridge has multiple, I know it's where, this is where, get, for those of you who are in, in city infrastructure, this is where ownership of, of structures then gets very uh, interesting. And so basically Amtrak is now trying to work with whoever cut the, uh, wire to uh, put it back in, in, in function. So this is actually much more normal across rail related things than you might, that, might, that you might think of. So we're still working, we're still, we're still uh, going uh, back, uh, basically went back to the drawing board, back through, back to uh, working with our local con congressional delegation and, and folks in the FRA and, uh, and, and to figure out basically just how we can resubmit the, the application on a much more and have it much more robust. So one of the things that I'm personally doing is um, this past uh, year and this summer, uh, whenever I, we call something grassroots outreach in our community. So every station, that ha every route that has an Amtrak station, we go and visit mayors and uh, their, their congressional delegation. So we're, we're looking to get uh, much more robust letters of support from the region saying, hey, you know, like we, we, this is not just a Chicago thing, this is a regional thing. So that's one of the things that I'm working on in, in government affairs. I'm not a spokesperson for Metra, <laughs> but it's it will improve service for for both folks. I mean, just from the passenger experience, you know, you you want you want uh, passengers to one wayfinding, not get lost, right? Feel comfortable, uh, spend their money at the food court, right? Um, so it, it's definitely one of those security. Uh, currently, you know, what your uh, Amtrak police and Metro police, if something happens on the tracks, their their line of vision is blocked by uh, the small the the narrow corridors. So in terms of safety and all that, it's gonna definitely, um, it's gonna definitely help out. And just better illumination, um, bathroom, ADA accessibility again. So it's gonna help, it's gonna improve the experience for both for, for Metro and Amtrak passengers. I can talk to you about that afterwards because the timer just went off, but that's definitely something that, you know, as, as Chicagoans, uh, I think sometimes we take for granted our public transportation that we have in the city, uh, PACE, Metra, CTA. And so it's really interesting when I go to rural communities or, or suburban communities and, you know, their reliance on cars and the, and the placement of the station. So uh, I am personally, you know, bringing this up when I meet with different mayors of different cities that are car centric and saying, hey, you know, you have this beautiful station downtown on your main street. What are you all doing to invest in your main street and bring population and residents to the main street rather than, you know, uh, suburban growth? Obviously, I start kind of stepping over my boundaries as a as a government affairs person for Amtrak, but I definitely bring those conversations up with, with folks that I've met on the road. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be outside.